Hi, it's me, Denise here, um, facing the cult, or facing the anti-cult, the anti-cult cult. Um, makes you think of those old mad magazine spy versus spy cartoons. Am I dating myself? Yep. Um, those of you who follow my blog, Freedom is Sacred, it's a blog spot. So it's freedom dash is dash sacred dot blog spot dot com. I'll have a link listed up here. Um, you will have received the announcement that the Jesus Christians have disbanded. Um, <laughs> but the anti cult people, no, nope, they're still out there. Um, the one website that the family hate site that's run by Nick and Kate Croft um, that features Kevin McKay, um, a man after his father's own bank account. Uh, they're still up trying to, to figure out what their next step is. But they've never been devoted to anything except destroying Kevin McKay's father's family, career, and uh, religious ministry. And they're trying to count it as a victory that they've disbanded, but they're also a little confused because, of course, a group of Christian witnesses cannot disband. Uh, it's people who have a similar belief. And they may be meeting together at one point, um, wandering off in teams of two to witness, coming back together or just each going their own way. They still each bring their own individual soul and their own individual faith with them. Dave McKay never promoted his writings as anything other than his own opinions. He never claimed to be a prophet. He never claimed exclusive truth. Um, he was careful to keep the Jesus Christian theology extremely basic so that, uh, in his opinion, people didn't have to leave other denominations behind if they joined. Theoretically, I could remain a Catholic and still participate as a Jesus Christian. Uh, that, of course, depends on my own reading of Catholic doctrine. But just the same, that was, that was McKay's attempt, which obviously is not the kind of thing a cult leader does. A cult leader does not want you maintaining your outside connections. And I'm just pointing that out. But anyway, the Jesus Christians have disbanded. Um, you can still buy the literature. You can still go to Amazon and find survivors, uh, listening, what's that? Yeah, the various books, Survivors, Listening, and The Destroyers, which are the three parts of the End Times trilogy. Um, the 500 getting close to 500 pages of hate that's in the Rick Ross Institute continues. There's only one person in that cluster of professional haters that can call himself a former Jesus Christian, and that's Malcolm West, and, and he's interesting. I've got his posting right here. I um, thought I'd read it to you. This, is, this went up today, actually, and he's addressing another sorry excuse of humanity fellow who posts as Apollo and Apollo is a Scotsman from what I can see of his postings what he said he presents himself as a Scotsman who has no connection to the Jesus Christians other than to have read a few uh, of these postings and then he went over to the Jesus Christian already primed up with the Rick Ross hate material and started, you know, calling uh, people names and acting like a complete rude person. Um, so, uh, of course, it's going to go on standby just as I'm trying to read it. Well, while we pull this up. Um, Rick Ross Institute is a professional pogrom, hate march, hate rampaging type of group. They, they are professionals at leading teams 
to attack individuals and clusters of people that they characterize as being cults. They do not go after any group that could uh, be unquestionably characterized as a cult. They go after just every group that is anybody, particularly anybody Christian. Rick Ross has a special hatred for independent Christians of every type. Rick Ross is Jewish. There's uh, quite a bit of material available if you Google on uh, the cult busters um, and the uh, Israeli connection of the Cult Awareness Network. I'm suggesting you Google it because I haven't got time to go into it in this video, but I am going to go in soon. Um, oh, Malcolm must be laughing his butt off if he's watching this because I still can't seem to pull that screen up. My laptop is being persnickety right now. Um, but what I was trying to pull up was Malcolm West moving the attack onto a man named Glenn. This fellow named Glenn was never a Jesus Christian. And I would not say he was really a Jesus Christian hater either. He was a... a like me, someone who would go into the forum to have discussions, as you can in any social group anywhere, um, some of which was friendly, and sometimes he criticized, and he would get into little interpersonal um, things with people. And yet Malcolm has got a hard on on for Glenn. For some reason, he's angry. I'm not sure what it is. Is it that Glenn was not enough of a critic? Um, is it that Glenn was one of the last people posting when the Jesus Christians suddenly disbanded? Because what they did was they, they, they knew better than to prepare anybody for this. I'm sure that most of their discussions as they were getting ready to disband were how do we protect ourselves from Rick Ross? If we're not together as individuals, then how can we each go home to our families and protect our families against Rick Ross, against Brian Birmingham, against Malcolm West, against Anita Walker, against Susan Smith Summers. That is essentially the complete cluster of the team that harasses and intimidates people that they identify with the Jesus Christians. And when they haven't got an actual Jesus Christian in front of them, they'll go after people like Glenn, They've been coming after me, and I've said, yeah, come on, bring it on, make my day. Come on after me. What have I got to lose? You look like absolute asses every time you attack me. I, absolutely, you look like asses, because I am not a cult. Count the number of people sitting in front of this camera. If you're going to start attacking everybody who goes to Mass once in a while as a cult then uh, you've got yourselves quite a job because we've survived 2,000 years of people like you, Rick Ross, Brian Birmingham, Malcolm West, Anita Walker, Susan Smith Summers. We've survived, and the Crofts too. We've survived over 2,000 years of people like you. I'm not afraid of you. And now I see you're going after this poor guy, Glenn. However, you expose yourselves every step of the way. Why on earth are you promoting more hate on individuals when the group you're fighting has disbanded? But Rick Ross is professional. He's a professional people hunter. He's a professional predator. He trains predators. He finds people like Brian Birmingham, who is public about his Asperger's syndrome and his obsessive compulsive disorder. He's spoken about those things publicly on television. He's been on camera with the UMass Boston veterans. Um, Rick Ross has bragged about getting illegal access to McLean's hospital records. The Jesus Christians have disbanded, and now you're moving on to individuals. You're going after that Australian Glenn. 
Why? Because he didn't criticize Dave McKay enough? You're angry that he had a few friendly conversations? Most of his friendly conversations were sarcastic. Now that's the problem right there. Malcolm West cannot, doesn't understand what he's looking at. You people don't even understand when you see someone being sarcastic because your team leader, Brian Birmingham, has Asperger's Syndrome. And people with Asperger's Syndrome, this is a simple scientific fact. Google Asperger's and look it up. Look up the part about literalism. You use sarcasm with somebody who has Asperger's and they are not going to understand what's going on. To understand sarcasm requires sensitivity to tone, emotional expression, and irony, metaphor. A sarcastic comment is usually the opposite of what the person is actually saying. Rick Ross has deliberately recruited and exploited people who cannot understand that and promoted public hate and used them as team leaders. Malcolm West is stepping to the fore now. I don't think he has Asperger's, but I don't know what his problem is at all. He he's, claims to be studying to be a lawyer, which means he's in some kind of college. And it's scary to think that colleges accept people who cannot understand what a novel is, who don't understand what fiction is. That all novels follow themes. If you decide to write an apocalyptic novel, you are going to write it on elements found in the book of Revelation because that's what an apocalyptic novel is. Dave McKay wrote Survivors to show a different interpretation of Revelation from what Tim LaHaye wrote. Dave McKay wrote a number of essays connected with his novel to explain how he was refuting Tim LaHaye's points. Those are two writers of fiction who addressed the same subject. And this is like, this Rick Ross thing has been like an, an, an imam putting out a fatwa on a writer. That's one of the reasons I'm so angry. As an artist and a writer and an intelligent person, freedom is sacred. The American government has been supporting Rick Ross, a Jew, who puts out fatwas on people who write books that he can't understand. And he recruits mentally challenged people like Malcolm West, Brian Birmingham, and these others to come in and declare that they're going to piss on the grave of an author just because they don't understand a fictional novel. And now that the Jesus Christians have disbanded and did it in a careful way, because they each have to protect themselves from Brian Birmingham, Malcolm West, Anita Walker, the Croft family, Nick and Kate Croft, Susan Smith Summers, those people are all going to be looking like hawks for any of these poor individuals if they show up in a job anywhere. 